Okay, right, thanks very much. Right, so um, I'm David Lane, and what I want to do today is spend just a few minutes talking about this question from a modeler's perspective. The question may look uh, needlessly existential. Uh, I want to assure you that I'm going to give a very practical answer to it. Uh, let me start off. Um, just by reminding us what is a model. Many, many of you old chums out there know what this is. I just want to be clear about it. It's a simplified representation of something that exists in the world, some object or situation. And for me, the central point is that it helps you answer a question about that situation. That's possibly still too abstract, so I thought I'd start by bringing along a computer model. Uh, and here it is. Uh, as you can see, uh, materials-wise, it doesn't look much like a computer. It's actually a shoebox, a German shoebox. Don't know quite why. Uh, with a keyboard. And this isn't a bad joke. Uh, this is a real model uh, that was built with a real purpose in mind. Uh, a few years ago, I caught myself at home, sitting at my desk, reaching over my laptop, thought, this is not doing my neck or my back a lot of good. Also, it would be really nice to have a huge screen, wouldn't it? So I should go and buy myself a huge screen. But of course, what I need to do is get a screen that my laptop will fit in front of, and there'll be room to use the keyboard and so forth. So I built this to answer that question. Is the screen that I'm looking at, is the screen I might buy right for my laptop? So I went around a few suppliers using this and eventually bought a large screen and installed it. And it fitted, and the model was useful. It helped me answer the question. And that's the sort of very practical use of models which I am interested in. It's the sort of practical thinking behind my question, what are we doing here today? Now, to answer it, I'm going to describe three things, uh, and at rather different length, I might add. Uh, so let me start off by talking about how I got here today. Well, uh, as a little boy in Kent, uh, I was building models, except in those days they looked rather like this. Uh, I suppose the question was, uh, you know, does this look real? Have I made this look real? With a side order of, does this look really cool? Yes. Uh, at school, things got a bit more serious. Uh, algebra came along. Uh, so you could ask uh, questions like this. Um, how far can you shoot a projectile and get the answer, which was really very nice, and I'm sure some of you did that. Uh, a few years and a few maths degrees later, uh, my models had a tensor calculus in, uh, but there was still a question at the very center of the work. There it is. Uh, and here the spheres were amphibian eggs and the chemicals were ionic calcium, and the answer was clear. Yes, you can get waves on a sphere. There you go, that's what I produce, waves on a sphere. And by the way, if like me, you think these graphics look a bit, a bit old and dusty, that's because they're 35 years old. Uh, but a couple of weeks ago, um, this work was referenced um, by an Australian woman and her co-author, and they'd redone the work and actually pushed it forward. They redid the simulation. So that was a Bronwyn Bradshaw Hayek and her co-author, and I had a lovely email discussion with her. Anyway, I, I asked if I could steal their much cooler graphics. So if that makes you feel more comfortable, and it does me, there you go. Waves on a sphere. Um, when I was working for Shell, uh, I discovered system dynamics modeling. As some of you will know is my thing. And the promise here was models that could answer a really very significant question. What policies make the difference between organizations that succeed and those that stagnate or fail? There was still mathematics, calculus actually, underneath, but captured in symbols and friendly algebra so senior managers could sit around discussing their business, participating in model building, asking what if questions. Here, this is a little snippet of a model, which is a startup com company manufacturing and selling electronic components. I guess the question there was, how do we grow the different parts of the business together? It's a question worth asking because if you get it wrong, rapid growth hits a wall and crashes the company. You can try some different policies, more cautious growth, but if you get used to increased delivery delays, your customers walk away and the company starts to unravel again. If you keep sales force and customer orders and production capacity in line and try your best to manage the delays in the system, you can create sustained growth. There's a big difference between those runs. There's a big difference between the policies that produce those runs. It's worth 
thinking about this worth trying to answer that question about how do I grow the company. And I liked this kind of modeling. I like this. So in my time at Shell, I built a lot of system dynamics models, and I tried to answer versions of that significant question across a range of companies and departments in the business. And I became convinced that modeling could be applied to many, many issues and used with a very, very broad range of people. Uh, as John said, I'm now at Henley Business School. I'm still interested in using system dynamics models to answer significant questions. In recent years, uh, my focus has been on public policy questions. So I've seen modeling be useful in many government departments. Now, as you will have realized, um, there was one more step that got me here, that got us all here, which is this key report that John has mentioned already. And as he said, Dervila is going to tell you more about it after me, but just briefly, this is it. It's one of a series of Blackett reports named after PMS Blackett, the father of OR, uh, the profession that John and I and a number of us are in. The report was written because Mark Walpert, uh, then the government's chief scientific advisor and co-chair of the Prime Minister's Council for Science and Technology, called together a bunch of people from companies and universities, uh, a learned society, some government departments. And in 2017, we wrote this Blackett report. And the idea was to get people interested in modeling. We tried to explain how it worked, what it was. We gave lots of examples of applications in many areas. And there were a number of recommendations. I'm only going to mention two, because these are, I hope, why we are all here today. And that's really what I would like to end up talking about. So those two recommendations, you've seen one already, uh, but here they are. These show that we wrote the report to make a difference, a difference to companies, a difference to, to governments, a difference to third sector, uh, a difference in the real world. And really, the words you see on the screen there are just an official way of saying, we'd love to help you discover more about modeling and how it might help you and your organization. And that's it, really. That's really the purpose of the day, because we think that modeling can help. I'm just going to say a few final words on that. We like to say that the world is getting more and more complex, but actually, getting things done in the real world has always had difficulties. This is a Babylonian clay tablet. Uh, you can go and see it yourself. It's in the British Museum, which is about two kilometers away in that direction, I believe. Uh, this is nearly 4,000 years old. It's a complaint from a manufacturer to a supplier. <laughs> I'll say it again. Getting things done in the real world has always had its difficulties. But modeling can help, I would say. Modeling can help you ask questions and get answers. It can help you explain what has happened and what might happen. That might seem a bit technical, that's fine, but modelings, models can also break down the silos that build up in organisations by helping you see how the pieces fit together. And that's an idea that's in the computational modelling report. It's a particular interest of mine, I confess. Yes, models can address very complex technical issues, and they're very good at that, and you need them for that. Mathematics, computation, coding is important. But models can also aid communication and participation in decision-making. You all know that's a problem. We have very, very sound social science research on this, by which I, of course, mean a Dilbert cartoon. We know how things work because we have Dilbert's group IQ formula. The intelligence quotient of any meeting can be determined by starting with 100 and subtracting five points for each participant. So when you're alone in a room, the project is good. By the time the second person has arrived, what do you think? Ah, there are many issues. Three people, what are the issues? Is it our mission to think of issues? That's an issue. And by the time the fourth person has arrived, here you go. Let's write a purpose statement. That could be our mission. Is that like an objective? That's an issue. Now, I have spent far too much of my finite time on this planet in that meeting. Uh, and you have two, right? Now, anyone who tells you that they can solve that problem is a fool or a liar or both. And I am not telling you that modeling can solve that problem. But what I am telling you is modeling can begin to attend to that problem. It can address it to some extent. It can help. 
which I think is the best you can get. Okay? And this is why the report makes a bold claim that senior decision makers will increasingly become involved in modeling. And here you see it happening. This is a picture from the report. There is a section in the report on participatory modeling. And this is what has kept me interested in modeling for half a century. Seeing models help people work smarter, work together better. I hope my enthusiasm has caught your interest today. If not, then Derville is going to give it another go. We'll get you there somehow. But really, we are all here today as a resource for you. All of today's speakers are here to persuade you that the world is complex, people are clever and motivated, but modeling can still help us answer some difficult questions if you use it right. So, what are we doing here today? Well, I hope that we are all here to combine forces to make sure that the report that we spent so much time on has some good effects in the real world. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.